Hi, I'm Ryan Hang, and welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript inquires about Rock Voices, a community singing group here in Northampton. Connor McClendon talks to the girls' basketball team about their season so far, and Meredith Pavlovich learns more about the NHS Art Department's Empty Bowl project. Lastly, The Transcript crew discovers what it's like to live off a meal supplement. Hi, I'm Nell Sanders, and this week I got to know a unique local choir called Rock Voices. Created by award-winning composer and director Tony Lehner, this rock choir provides a singing opportunity for everyday individuals trying to find their voice. Rock Voices offers a safe and fun environment for members with a range of skill level and ability. Sheet music and recordings are also provided for individuals who can't read music. There are rehearsals throughout the week in Northampton and Hadley, Massachusetts, Brattleboro, Vermont, and West Hartford, Connecticut, and there are hundreds of members that attend. I was able to sit in on a rehearsal last Tuesday evening at JFK Middle School to check the choir out. What inspired you to create this, this program? Um, I saw there was a need in the community for people to sing who didn't have a singing outlet. People who hadn't sung in a long time or um, you know adults who always wanted to sing but never could. So with this group I thought why not take popular music and uh, make it really welcoming, easy to join experience. So I like to think of it as a rock band with a lot of singers as opposed to a choir. I create a safe space for everybody in there because singing is so personal so I want to make sure people can come in and share their voice and not feel they're going to be made fun of. For the concert we all come together in a giant stage, the Academy of Music in this case. Um, we had almost 200 singers on it. That's all we could fit. We would have more, but we couldn't fit them all. We have a live band that comes in at the end, um, all with local roots. It's fun because the people in the group, everyday people, get to be rock stars. Well, I, I went to go here uh, Mall Town one year. I was like, oh my God, this is for me. I really love doing like rock music and I, and I like being a around people and I love to sing and just like walk out and I love Tony Latin. He's like amazing, fantastic human being. I really, really, really wanted to do this with Letitia and I have been performing and um, acting and singing since I was five years old and I hadn't been in a choir or anything for a long time. This community really um, embraced us. Too. Back in 2012, I was one of the original 35 of uh, Rock Voices. Um, I saw it advertised in the Valley Advocate, actually, and you know, I'm a bathroom car singer. So I said, man, you don't have to read music. I love to sing. It's stress relief for me. It's just, it's just wonderful. It takes me out of the real world into this rock, rock world. What do you like the most about um, being part of this group? Uh, just adding my voice to this great sound. And, and it feels good to me to express myself. There's so many of us that I bump into somebody on the street all the time who sings in the group. I've never worked in, through something so hard and had so much fun and then watched something all splintered come together at the last minute. And, and there's, it's very interesting because you're just singing with these people but you feel such a connection because you're all depending on everybody else's part. Tony is like an angel that comes down from once in a while and makes us laugh so hard so that it makes it easier to sing when you're laughing and happy. And, and it's a big community of people. We, we are really have each other's get backs. Hello and welcome to Hamped Up. I'm here with Hanalise and Lorraine and we're here to talk about girls basketball. So first question for you guys, last season you came into the playoffs as a pretty low seed and you didn't last very long. But this season you've gotten off to an 8-1 start, you haven't lost to a single Western Mass opponent. What do you think has been the biggest reason for the improvement from last season? I mean, like last year, not like we didn't get along great but we didn't always do things together. We didn't make it a point to do some team bonding stuff. And this year we've really gotten the team more molded together as one and we're all working together as a unit instead of individually working together. And I think that's helped us in a really positive way. 
So I know last year at this point in the season, you had a very similar record, but you kind of fell off toward the end of the season. So what do you have to do this season to keep your momentum going right until the regular season finale? We can't go into games cocky thinking that we deserve to win because our record's already good and that we're going to win. We need to go into games and play to our ability every time and never drop down to the ability of the other team. So the boys team obviously gets a lot of support. There's usually a big crowd in the Devil's Den. and. Even though the girls team has been a better team for the last few years, it doesn't feel like you guys get quite as much support. So do you wish that that would change? Um, I honestly don't think it's like a, some big deal that we don't have our own den. And I think that as long as the people that you care about and the people that care about you take the time out of their day to go to the game, which they usually do, then I think that's what really matters because being able to hear like those individual people that matter is really important. Like being able to hear your dad, being able to hear your sister, your boyfriend, all those things. It's cool to be able to hear your individual fans. I agree with that statement. It's definitely fun um, for me. Like during a game, I can clearly hear my dad like shout at me in Danish <laughs> a lot. But I mean, it's, it just shows that he cares. So it's great. And then finally for you, uh, you're going off to play at and I don't quite know how to pronounce this correctly, but Kanishas? Yes, Kinesis? correct, Kanishas. Okay. Um, so are you excited about going off to play at college next year? Definitely. It's, it's going to be an awesome experience to just do what I love, plus study, as I also love to do. So it's, it, it was a good combination with both academics and athletics. Do you have any goals to go beyond the college level in terms of basketball? Maybe. We'll see. All right, great. Well, thank you guys so much for being here, and good luck tonight against Chicken Comp. Thank, thank you. you. The girls' basketball team did end up losing to Chicken Comp on Wednesday night, but both the boys' and girls' basketball teams are sitting in the top half of their respective leagues. The boys' swimming and diving team is sitting at 4-2, and two, and the girls' swimming and diving team is 3-3. Three and three. The boys' indoor track team is 8-0, and, oh, and the girls' indoor track team is 6-2. and two. Finally, the East Hampton ice hockey team won 5-1 on Wednesday night, and NHS senior Nick Skoranek scored two goals in the victory. I'm Meredith. This week I talked to Katie and Kaya about what the Empty Bowl project is and how we can contribute to end world hunger. So the Empty Bowl project is basically potters have been doing it for 26 years and it is a project to raise awareness for world hunger and um, so what we're doing is we are making a bunch of bowls we are going to have a suggested donation price and a dinner in April, April 5th. We encourage people to come to Ceramics Club to make bowls or even you could donate a bowl that you've already made to help the cause. We're giving all of the money to help fight um, world hunger because one in nine people in the world um, don't have enough food to be like active and healthy and one in every five children don't have enough food and so we're trying to raise money by selling these bowls that we made um, and having like a dinner and giving all of the money. Why did you choose to work on this? I mean it's just like... We just thought it was really cool, I mean... Yeah, it's, it's a really like using your um, like artistic talents to help fight a, an actual cause is very important and we encourage everyone to come and help. The only way to make a bowl isn't just throwing, like, uh, as Miss Jaffe is doing. Uh, she's in. She's making it just with a slab. Anyone can do it, and everyone should come do it. Uh, Ceramics Club on Thursday yeah. after school. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So we spent the entire day making this stuff and we're a bit nervous, a little bit nervous. Not eating food for a week is gonna be hard. We may be dead when this is <laughs> Yeah, we might not have done the measurements right. You look at the back of most food and there's a hundred plus ingredients and we just made a week of meals in under 20. She's just powder, like a wheat smoothie. Yeah, there's only water. <laughs> like a wheat, a wheat smoothie. smoothie. <laughs> and uh, that's not going to be fun. No. This morning, I tried to call a nutritionist to see what they thought of our plan. But no one picked up. 
So I turn to the next best thing, the internet. Soylent was created by Rob Reinhardt because he thought it took too much time to eat every meal during the day. Lately, however, Soylent has been gaining notoriety as a possible solution to the world's hunger problems. Since its invention, Rob has replaced all but two of his meals per week with Soylent. We decided to take on his challenge. Day one. First, first, this is just, this is my breakfast on day one. And I feel sick. So how are you feeling, Emmett? Day two. Day two. I'm feeling okay. Yesterday was, was a little tough for me. Dinner time. Smelled a lot of good food. And then drank this. I keep thinking about food a lot, but I'm not super hungry. This is filling. Yeah, it's filling. So I don't know. I can't. Honestly, I can't complain too much. I have a lot more time, especially in the morning. Like woke up at seven today, which is awesome. Okay, so this is day three, and I have decided not to, to not eat anymore. I too have decided to end it. Um, I probably could have gone the whole week, but I've been having dreams about food, and if no one else is doing it, then I'm not gonna. I feel like this was an experiment to see if what we're doing could actually replace a diet and could replace all of your meals, and what I've found so far is that this is nowhere close to food. I guess my final conclusion would be, don't do this. Thanks for watching. Check out nhstechnology.org for more.